All right, everyone. Let's dig into what's shaping up to be a compelling and potentially dramatic stretch of weather ahead. I've been combing through the long-range models and analyzing every fresh satellite loop, and I can tell you right now, things are starting to get seriously interesting across North America. We're about to break down the cold, the snow, and something unfolding high in the Arctic that may be sending an early warning about how this winter could play out. But first, let me frame the atmosphere for you. While most people are just now slipping into the full mindset, the atmosphere is already preparing for winter behind the scenes. Up in the Arctic Circle, snow is rapidly accumulating, and not just as a scenic white blanket, this is building energy. That's dense, brutally cold Siberian air forming, winter's fuel source, and a setup like this can completely reshape early season weather patterns but it's not just the snowpack grabbing my attention. Something critical is happening over the eastern Pacific, and it could end up being the deciding factor in what kind of winter we see. We've been watching that La Nina signature desperately try to hang on as we push deeper into fall. But here's the twist. Ocean temperatures and upper-level wind patterns are beginning to point toward a shift to a more neutral ENSO pattern by midwinter. And let me tell you, that's a wild card. A neutral ENSO can send the jet stream into unpredictable territory, opening the door for sharp swings, powerful storms forming in new zones, and Arctic air plunging farther south than expected. Quick side note. If you'd like personalized weather forecasts for your area, drop your city or region in the comments, and I'll get back to you as time allows. Also, if you're enjoying the coverage, hit that like button and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Now, back to business. Compared to this time last year, we're already seeing a noticeable boost in snow cover across the Canadian prairies and large portions of Asia. The snowpack has expanded farther south, and on top of that, there's more early season sea ice forming north of Alaska. That tells me one thing. This cold air isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Take a look at Siberia, that dominant dome of high pressure you're seeing. That's brutal, heavy Arctic air packing in and intensifying. And once this air mass begins shifting eastward, it's going to spill right into Alaska. Models are already signaling this evolution heading into next week. If we look at it from above, from the North Pole perspective, the pattern is obvious. A pocket of cooler air slips temporarily into the northeast, but the real cold, the deep stuff, remain stockpiled over Siberia. And if you're watching for early signs of how winter might set up in North America, this is exactly what you track. Closer to home, we've got another reinforcing punch of cooler air dropping in this weekend. That will set off some storm development, maybe even severe weather Saturday into Sunday, especially as the front pushes east. The setup has enough atmospheric energy that I wouldn't be surprised to see a few strong storms fire along the east coast before the system finally exits. But that's not the end of the story. Up north, those long wave troughs are beginning to dip farther south. Once that jet stream pattern locks in near the end of the month, around the 29th or 30th, we may get our first legitimate taste of winter-like chill. The GFS is already hinting at it. While we're still a ways out, if this verifies, we could close October with a powerful shot of early season cold. And let me leave you with this. The real wild card this year may be the warm pool of Pacific water just south of Alaska. That ocean heat acts like jet fuel, feeding storms and supercharging the Aleutian Low. Every time Siberian cold air slams into those warm Pacific waters, it triggers massive storm development. Storms that can redirect the jet stream and unlock Arctic outbreaks into the US. This story is just beginning. Winter is already knocking. And this entire setup sets the tone for what may unfold as we head into early winter. Now in the short term, we're not seeing a massive Arctic snowpack just yet. It's mostly bitter, dry polar air dominating for now. But don't let that fool you. The snow cover will expand quickly and temperatures are already locked well below freezing. 
This is exactly the kind of atmospheric pattern that doesn't loosen its grip easily. Now here's something I really want you to focus on. The ensemble guidance, especially from the European model, is practically shouting that snowfall is about to explode across Alaska, British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest. That warm Pacific water sitting offshore is supercharging incoming Pacific storms, dragging those upper-level troughs farther south. And that's when we get real winter action. Heavy mountain snow, possibly arriving in early November and kick-starting winter for those higher elevations. With a strong Pacific jet stream locked in place, some of that cold air could actually get bottled up and pinned down as we transition deeper into winter. And this is where La Nina steps into the equation, or more accurately, this weak La Nina pattern currently developing. It may not be intense, but it matters, because when you combine a warm North Pacific with La Nina energy, you often get a stronger subtropical jet stream, which keeps the southern US active, stormy and volatile. But once this pattern edges toward ENSO neutral in January and February, the entire atmospheric balance begins to shift. So, what does that mean in practical terms? Wet, stormy Pacific Northwest. Colder, somewhat drier air diving into the northern plains and Great Lakes. A very active storm corridor stretching from the Ohio Valley into the deep south as two jet streams begin to collide. Short-term outlook. Let's bring it back to the immediate future. Heading into Thursday and Friday, a major storm system is going to hammer Alaska, delivering heavy wind, driving rain, and significant mountain snow across the interior. Snow will also spread into Wyoming and the northern Rockies by week's end. By Friday, a punch of cold air begins sliding south into Montana and the Dakotas, signaling the start of a larger cooldown across the northern plains. Meanwhile, out east, a lingering coastal low will keep widespread clouds, gusty winds and choppy surf in play as we head toward the weekend. But the real energy reloads out west. Another strong Pacific storm slams into British Columbia on Sunday, unleashing a fresh round of rain and mountain snow across the region. As colder air dives farther south, snow levels will drop across the Pacific Northwest, and from there, the parade of Pacific storms just keeps marching inland, low after low, system after system. Classic La Nina behavior. The jet stream turns wavier, dips farther south, and by October 28th, 29th, I think we could be knocking on winter's door. If that reservoir of Siberian cold air breaks loose and gets pulled into the North American, pattern buckle up, precipitation, outlook, now let's tie precipitation trends into this story because this is where the pattern really begins to make sense. In classic La Nina style, the Southwest, Southern California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico runs drier than normal. The Pacific Northwest turns soaking wet with relentless storm waves. The Southeast trends drier, sitting south of the main storm track. The Plains, Midwest, Great Lakes, and interior northeast run wetter than average. This aligns perfectly with a weak La Nina setup, exactly what we're observing right now. So what about snowfall? Here's where things get interesting and a little unpredictable. When you combine colder than normal air across the northern tier, an active, energetic storm track, plus warmer than normal Great Lakes water, you get a high impact winter pattern. I expect a broad zone from the northern plains to the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and into the interior northeast to have a higher than normal chance of snowfall this season. These regions are set up for repeat winter storms, each arriving with just enough cold air to flip rain over to snow again and again. Now, I know what you're wondering. What about the south and southeast? Great question. Even though the south may run drier overall, all it takes is one strong arctic blast lining up with one well-timed storm, and you can absolutely get snow in places like northern Georgia, Alabama, the Carolinas, Tennessee, 
I'm not saying we're looking at a repeat of the 2021 deep freeze, but I'm saying the ingredients are on the table for at least one or two memorable winter events in the south. Great Lakes. Way. Lake effect alert up north is where things could get intense, with consistently cold air, an active storm highway, and warm Great Lakes water. We are staring at a classic lake effect snow year. Some of the Great Lakes are currently running near record warmth, and when Arctic air blasts across that warmer water, it ignites powerful snow bands that can dump a foot of snow overnight. If you'd like a local forecast for your city or region, drop it in the comments below. I'll respond individually as I have time. Commenting is completely free. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next update.